So Don, in the last video we talked about how both the dose is higher in your supplements and the quality. All right, let's take uh, one of my favorite uh, compounds in, the, in all the world is a, is a compound called rhodiola rosea. Okay. All right, now, rhodiola rosea is a plant that grows in the mountains of Siberia. So right then and there, you've got to realize that somebody's got to go and get this plant in the mountains of Siberia, right? All right, the second thing is that once you find the plant, what are you going to do with it? Some people could take the plant, grind it up into a powder, dehydrate it, grind it up into a powder, and sell it as Rodeo Rosea. That's not going to work for anybody because the volume of active ingredient that you get in some ground up dehydrated powder is not going to cut it. There's just not enough active ingredient. So what do you have to do? You have to be able to extract the active ingredients from that plant in such a way where you can actually standardize those active ingredients and now you have a true natural medicine. You know exactly what's in there, you know exactly the amount that's in there. That's all wonderful and fine and dandy, however that doesn't tell you the whole story. If you extract the active ingredients out of rhodiola, you need to know the names of those active ingredients. And this is what people get so confused. You'll see on the label of a rope, it'll say rhodiola. First of all, is it rhodiola rosea? Because if it's not, it's not grown in the mountains of Siberia. So anyone could put rhodiola on the label, you'd never know whether it was rhodiola rosea, rhodiola crenulata. There's 22 different species of rhodiola, and only one has the active ingredients that we're looking for. So right then and there, the public could be totally buffaloed by it. Once you understand what the active ingredients are, you've got to be able to identify them and, and know the name of it. Like for example, the active ingredient in rhodiola is something called rosabin. Who would know that? Solidricide. Who would know what rosabin and solidricide is? Only the people at these high scientific levels that were the ones that extracted it out, right? And I have to know it because what I want to do is to make sure you get the active ingredient that's in rhodiola, which is called rosabin and cylindricide, in the right amount. That's where the dose comes in. But remember, these things are, they, they, they are contained as a fraction of the total, which again, makes people, they don't understand this. You would not know, you'd have to do the math in order to figure this out. But when someone says, like let me give you an example, ginkgo biloba, we've all heard of that. Well, if you look at ginkgo biloba extract, it will say, you know, 20 some percent ginkgo flavone glycosides, right? That's the active ingredient that's in there. Okay, so you know that that's going to be a pretty good uh, ginkgo. But does, people don't know what all these particular special active ingredients are, and they don't know what um, fraction they are contained in, right? So if I give you 100 milligrams of something, and it's a 5% rosabin, that means there's five milligrams in there, right? Because it's a portion of the total. I want to make sure that what you get is the right amount of that rosabin and solidricide. So I have to put enough of the dose in so that you get that. So if it's 10 milligrams, I have to put 200 milligrams in. Do you see? Who would know that? Hardly anyone understands that. So you have to... You have to know, like I said earlier, you have to trust the person that's putting that together and know that they have the knowledge to do it because this stuff can get really confusing. But right there, one active ingredient that's in our product, I was able to get it from the best source from the person who was literally the guy who designed the monograph for that particular um, plant compound and the one who understands the extraction process. Do you think everybody knows people like this? No. <laughs> They don't. And all the other ingredients that come into our products, they have similar stories. I know who the people are who have done the research and who understand how to make it correct. We've had an influx of other countries. China as an example, and I don't mean to say bad things about other countries, but I can tell you this. They're very good at what they call kind of duplicating things. So in China, they have some of the most incredibly um, high-end raw materials. But on the other end, what they'll do is they'll take, they'll duplicate things that other people are doing and they'll flood the market with stuff that's a fraction of the cost and it just has absolutely no value whatsoever. But it'll have on the label what you what you so you see, if you, if you don't understand, number one, if you're not a behind-the-scenes person and you don't get the industry, 
I just feel so bad for people who are out there, consumers, who are thinking they're getting knowledge about supplements because the companies are giving them that information. They're not getting any knowledge whatsoever about what's actually in the bottle. And I've had arguments, I've been in, in um, uh, meetings where you know some of the top supplement companies out there now where we have we have had these discussions that I'm having with you right now and I've been literally physically removed from the meetings because of disagreements that we are having between how you do it right or how you do it to save money and I never compromised on how you have to do this right but most companies don't want to hear that they play the game of how to make money with the supplements because they know that consumers don't understand any of this stuff you're all being buffaloed by the supplement industry. And I hate to say it like that, but it's just a fact of life.